Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Scrap Mechanic Survival Mode. And you may notice, you've been, if you've been following the series, that our workshop looks slightly different than the last time we were here. There is somewhat of a ceiling now, and that's because I've been doing a little bit of work off camera, uh, and my craft bots are working right now. They're making some, a little bit of paint, they're making some brick, and they're making some more of this metal. I decided to convert my a lot of my metal into this... What is it called again? I always forget the names of everything. Extruded metal, because basically you can double your materials by doing that, because it only takes five metal, and you can make ten extruded metal out of it. So I figured I'd make the ceiling the same as, like, what this is, um, but I might need to put another layer of something else up there. And I've also extended my walls up, but I might change that, actually. There's a lot of unknowns right now that, yeah, your feedback might come in handy on future episodes. But speaking of feedback, before we get into working more on our base here, I don't have an announcement. This isn't actually an announcement. This is just a question. I got a question for you guys. Uh, now, a lot of people were asking for Hank merch. Speaking of Hank, um, has Hank come back yet? So a lot of people were asking for Hank merch, and I kind of shot down the idea because I don't own um, the Haybot model. So here's Hank. Hank's actually hanging out. He came back right out here. So I don't actually own the rights to Hank the Hay. What happened here? Did, did this actually get damaged in some way? Or did this... What? Okay, that's weird. I don't think that was like that before. But, uh, yeah. So, I was kind of reluctant to really make a shirt because I don't really own the rights to, um, Hank the Haybot. So, I was thinking, though, say hypothetically, and this is purely hypothetical now, hypothetically, if I were to get permission to make a shirt that, uh, has Hank on it in some way, um, oh my goodness, Hank, did you really just jump in? Who's that? Who's that under there? <laughs> Hank, why are you like this? <laughs> what are you even gonna do here? What's the plan? What is the game plan now? All right, Hank's gonna be hanging out in the water for a little while, just so you guys know. I don't really know if he's capable of getting out of the water, but I don't think that they breathe air, so I think they'll be okay. But hypothetically, if I were to uh, have permission to make some Hank merch, what, what would you want on the shirt? Uh, obviously, we want Hank on the shirt because it's Hank merch, um, perhaps some milk or something, but what should the shirt say? What do you, what, what would you want on it? I'll be looking in the comments for any feedback or inspiration. And if, and remember, this is all hypothetical. If the shirt becomes a reality, it will be based off of the comments down below, which I might regret. I might not regret. You might, you might regret leaving the comments. I don't know. There might be some regrets, but it'll exist and it'll be something that finally people will be able to get after they've been asking for it for so long. <laughs> hypothetically, of course, hypothetically. Not, it's not, nothing set in stone. So one of the things I'm gonna build in this episode, other than working on this floor up here, uh, finishing this out, is I think I wanna build a furnace. One of the things that is missing from our workshop here is definitely a furnace, or like a, like a smelting furnace, you know? Because we have the hammer, but what kind of metal are we gonna be hitting with the hammer? If, uh, we don't have a, a way to, to heat up the metal. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a modification to this press here that is a genius idea from the comments. And one of the crazy things about this idea is, um, I thought it was a really unique idea when I first saw the comment. And then I saw, like, dozens more people say the same exact thing. So apparently it's not that y unique of an idea, but it's an awesome idea regardless of its uniqueity. I know I just made up that word, but hey, doesn't that just make it even more unique? All right, so you know what? Let's actually start with that before the furnace, because that's going to be a quicker and easier modification. So now what I need is... Oh, cool. It only takes one metal, and I still have metal left. I'm going to need a mug. And then I'm also going to need some... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Just, just a suspension. One suspension is fine. Level one. All right, is our mug made yet? Our mug is made. All right, so we have to turn this off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we are going to actually create the illusion here. Hold on. Can I get in here? Oh, well, all right. We need to actually build something down in here. There we go. So now I just put this uh, suspension in here and the suspension needs to go. Actually, that's probably fine where it is. 
And then we can put the mug here. So now when we turn this back on, it should create the illusion that it presses. Oh yeah, look at that. It presses the mug. That was a great idea. That was a great idea and it actually works. That's cool. And actually, oh wait, um, wait, is that, that's controlled by a controller. Okay, so I can put this at five. Does five work? Oh yeah, five makes it go down all the way. Okay. I hope I didn't mess up the programming of it. I think I did it right. Look at that. That's pretty cool. All right, so now we actually have a press pressing something. Yeah, so that idea came from you guys in the comments, so thank you so much for that suggestion. And also, it's kind of a nod to the suspension mug uh, signature item on the channel, which we have one of them right here. Ooh. So now, for a furnace... Should we do a concrete furnace or a metal furnace? I think, or brick furnace. I think brick. I have a lot of, I think, do I have, I might not have a lot of brick. Well, I'm making brick right now. Let's do a brick furnace. We shouldn't need more than that. And I'll probably have to color the brick furnace, which is why I was making paint in the first place. But I don't have a whole, oh, here's 50. Okay. That's a decent amount of paint, actually. Should be enough to paint the furnace. So once again, I, uh, I was thinking about room. Some people were saying that there might not be room for a furnace, but I think we can put a furnace right here. It's not ideal as far as, like... You know, maybe I could put the press over there, actually, and put the furnace right here, because that would make more sense to have the furnace... Ugh, none of this makes sense. I'm gonna have to... I, I, need, I, th I think I need to reorganize everything here. I'm gonna change the way that this is facing, because I think, for convenience sake, if you pull something out of the furnace and you need to hammer it, you want to be able to pull it out of the furnace and then put it right on the anvil for the hammer. So just for the, the sake of logistics and convenience, I'm going to try to make this make more sense. And this is not the most convenient thing to undo from the ground. But, all right, here we go. Ready and catch. Oh, oh, our pillar's there. That's okay. We're being supported by more than just that pillar. All right, so we got this as a separate object now. Uh, after this, though, I'm going to tell you what my plans are for the next floor, which um, my plans aren't completely set in stone, but... I do have some plans. All right, there we go. This is fine. Can put those metal pegs back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and weld this right there. Okay, that does not go onto the wall. That's good. We can turn this back on. That switch. All right, that looks like it still works. By the way, I I was worried for a second because I've been building this the ceiling from this wall out, and I was like, does this hammer go above where I put the ceiling? And it is so close. It is like a quarter of a block away from the ceiling when that hammer goes up. Like, check this out. Like, look at that. It's like just, it actually almost looks like it'll hit, but uh, I tested it. I dragged out a piece of different material and that does not actually hit the ceiling. So we're all good. Okay, so now furnace can go here and this thing is gonna go right here. No, this is even, which means that this is going to be off center because this is an odd creation. So we're just gonna have to deal with that, unfortunately. We can go ahead and weld this right there. Turn it on. All right, I think we're good. Just make sure everything works. Okay, perfect. See, this is just testing out the, uh, the we're, we're testing out a mug prototype. This is like a an, an invincible self-repairing mug. You can see it gets pressed completely flat, but somehow, it just takes its former shape because the suspension mug is just superior in every way. It is it's, it is the perfect object, the suspension mug. So remember that. Am I going to have to try to make suspension mug merch now? Okay, so now furnace. Uh, once I, I'm just going to build this freehand. And by freehand, I mean like everything's built freehand and scrap mechanic pretty much. But I'm not actually going to really look at pictures. I'm just going to build what I think my furnace is going to look like. And let me start building it over here so I have a general idea of the size of this area. So, I do want to make it out of brick. My my impression of furnaces is they tend to be, like, a little bit rounded. So what I'm creating here, this is going to be the shelf where the actual furnace part is. I'm going to try to do some cool lighting effects, too. So here, let's make a hole like that. Yeah, that's already looking good. We have a framework for the front of our furnace right here. And I think this is going to fit okay. Okay, so let's start filling out the end here. I forget if I actually finished my thought on this or not, but I am going to try to make some lighting effects in here to make it look like the furnace is glowing. I don't know how effective that's going to be, 
with the way the dynamic lights and stuff work now. I haven't done a lot of testing with the, with the dynamic lights, but hopefully it'll look cool. All right, so this is what I'm thinking for the basic shape of the bottom of the furnace. And of course, we're going to have it taper up kind of like a chimney. Oh, that's kind of, well, we'll have it. Uh, this is going to be, a, this is going to be a risky weld, but I'm going to weld it to the wall because I was thinking the furnace needs to have exhaust come up and out. Uh, and there's going to be a floor above us, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're going to need to have the exhaust look like it's coming out somewhere else. So I think we're going to have it up against the wall and we're going to make it look like it's filtering out of the wall. All right, so I built the furnace. Oh, there's some weird lighting effects happening on the furnace for some reason. That's weird. Why? Where is that coming from? Why is it just like those two slivers of lights? Yeah, the dynamic lights, the way that they render, like the, the render distances and angles. See, like everything keeps changing as I change my camera angle. It's really weird how that happens. It creates some weird effects sometimes. Um, so we got our furnace. Obviously, this is the inside of the furnace. Um, and it is actually hollow. I can't. What if I do this? Can I get in? There we go. You can see it is hollow. Ooh, let me fill that in. It is hollow on the inside. It's not just for show. So yeah, it goes up and then it is designed to exit at the back here. So now let's paint it. What color should I paint it? Should I paint it like a gray color, a black color, or like an actual brick color? I'm going to go with gray. I feel like gray fits the aesthetic of what we have going on here so far. Okay, I think I've painted the entire thing in the correct color. So now let's figure out, uh, I have some lights on me. I have four lights on me. Let me get a, some bearings. All right, so that goes there. And then, oh, this is going to be hard to build around, isn't it? That goes there. That goes there. Right, you know what? We need the controller right away. I'm just going to... That, that's a temporary spot. I just need to turn this around. Um, oh, this needs to get off the lift, too. There we go. That turns around so I can build on it. Okay, so now I'm hoping if I... If I put them up like this, I feel like up is better. Up, 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 up. We can see them like really, really well from in here, which I was hoping we wouldn't be able to see them that well. But this is kind of as tall as I built it already. So yeah, I feel like this should be, whoops, like that. All right, so now I'm gonna paint uh, two of them red and then two i mean they're already kind of orange maybe like one of them yellow should i actually paint one orange i feel like that was a waste wasn't it all right so <laughs> this really doesn't look as great as i was hoping it was going to look to be honest uh i think i have more of those more ambient lights though maybe we can add some of those on the sides just for effect uh they're probably over here there we go one two i think two is good enough and you know, I'm actually going to hook up this switch to the lights as well. So that way when we turn this switch off, it'll actually turn the lights off as well. So it'll be like there's nothing uh, happening in here. All right, so I will once, do, once again do red over there and I'll do orange over here. And this one, these ones are going to turn up just to see. The white light is too much, I feel like. Also, it's daytime now. So there's that. Whoa. Okay, here we go. So now if I weld it from the center, where can we put this? All right. Oh, no, I did not just do that. <laughs> did I really weld it that high off the ground? I thought I was at the bottom of the ground, man. All right, now I need to cut it out of the wall. Then I do that. All right, that wasn't so bad. Now we're just going to fill the wall back in. Okay, right here? Right here good? I think right here is good. There we go. Now, if I want to move this, it's going to be even harder to move. All right, look at all that smelting. It looks so hot in there. All right, I think this was actually like that. So I'm going to use even... No, hold on. Yeah, I'm on the right paint. <laughs> there we go. I think that looks okay. I think it looks pretty good for a furnace. Okay, so now uh, I told you I was going to update you on what my plans were for... I think I want to change what I've already done here. And this is going to be a little bit difficult. Oh, I forgot. I have other updates that I forgot to update you on. So as you can see, I've worked on prototyping the pathway that goes over here. I'm thinking I might want to change this to brick. And of course, there's going to be like an actual stairway that goes up here. I was just building out over here just for the sake of having it measured out. So I built, I built, uh, started building this pathway out here. You know, I had to angle a little bit so it conformed better to where that meets up. And I also did it on the other side over here. Another update is one thing I kept running into that was really inconvenient 
was whenever I was by my bridges over here and I wanted to get up onto the tower or up there, the way I had to do it was either jump in the water and get up there or run all the way down and through here and then cross this like stupid little bridge I made and then go back off to the side and then go up the stairs and then now I'm up here. So I wanted a quicker way to be able to, whoops, I wanted a quicker way to be able to deal with that. Hold on, let me, let me prevent dying real quick and then we'll continue the story. Okay, dying averted. Living resumed. Okay, so now what I've done is I've made a stairway that goes up on both sides. So you can see, and it, it's also, I had to make sure it wasn't connected here because this is not connected here. And if this connects, that means that everything out in the back here, that's also why I have that gap. But this whole workshop area suddenly becomes a single piece with the entire front farm area. So I didn't want that happening. Um, there's a noticeable difference in lag. For example, I get 55, 56 frames right now. Pretty steady, 55 to 56. And I put this here. And now I have 40. Yeah, yeah, it goes down to 40 after doing that. And then I delete it. And now it's back up. So definitely a huge difference just by keeping that gap there. So this goes up. And easy way to get here from the bridge areas. And, oh, I actually forgot to do something on this side that I did on the other side. I wanted to make the little little railing to prevent people from falling in and getting hurt on the stairs because you don't want any medieval lawsuits. Medieval lawsuits were terrible back in the day. Like, hey, I fell on his stairs and then, and then you're stuck with the guillotine. So we don't want that. Okay, so yeah, then we can go down and I put this, obviously this railing right here is for safety as well. So that way you can rush down the stairs without accidentally following, falling in the water. So now we can walk over the other side and I'll just confirm with you guys, prove to you that I've done it on both sides. It's symmetrical, don't worry. All you OCD people out there, it is symmetrical. I counted, although that doesn't prevent me from making mistakes sometimes. And it is the same over here. All right, things are looking pretty good. I've also planted more potatoes. We got full potatoes up on our uh, raid reserves. We've also got, oh, there's a piece of wood missing right there. Must've gotten hit by a tape bot. We've also got full potatoes here, full potatoes here. We've also got, check it out, check it out. We also got full potatoes here, full potatoes here. I usually like to have two full containers of potatoes on my uh, scouting vehicle. Uh, not to mention this is full for the actual gun. Also, check it out, check it out. I'm just showing off my my ammo reserves. We got full pota- Okay, this isn't completely full, hold on. I actually used these during a raid. There we go, there we go. Full potatoes here, full potatoes here, and I had extra potatoes after that. I'm like, where am I gonna put these extra potatoes? Cause like all of my backup chests are full now. Um, I decided we're working on a, some weird spud gun concept here at our workbench. So I thought, why not just put some, oh, where, there, those were, that's where my carrots went. I was looking for those carrots. But we also have not full potatoes, but we just have some backups here. And I'm, I usually like to keep over a hundred on me just in case. Okay, there we go. So now above me is uh, flatness. So let's go ahead and toilet our way up here. So as you can see, we just have another floor up here. I'm thinking that this is not going to be the actual floor. This is just the ceiling of the floor below us. I might put another layer on top of this, which is just gonna use so many more resources. Oh, why do I do this to myself? Um, but we're gonna have like floor floor, like a like a, an actual floor. I don't know what kind of floor it's gonna be made out of. Probably something that's relatively cheap for resources. Um, but what I'm thinking about doing is actually tearing down this entire wall. And instead of having this floor be the same exact uh, area as the floor below us, why don't we do it kind of castle style like, like here. So, you know, we have, we have this floor right there, but then the one on top of it, it is contained within the area of that one and it goes up to a smaller floor. So why don't we pull these walls in a handful? So now we have more catwalks on the outside here. And then we have a smaller area to work with from here as well. And you know, we could even do like two, two castles, like two uh, rooms, two separate areas, and then have like a middle section. <sighs> I'm getting like, I'm getting some architectural inspiration now, just thinking about it. 
but there's probably going to have to be a lot of a lot of mining that I'm going to have to do to be able to prepare for this. So it might it might be a long time down the road before these thoughts become a reality. Because right now, the least fun thing of, at this stage of the game is having to grind for resources, especially considering when you're building big stuff like this, like every single one of these like drags of blocks that you're seeing right now is it's an entire stack. It's just one single stack of 256 and that's like one resource container full almost. So it can get really, really time consuming sometimes when you just want to have a lot of materials to build with. And for some reason, I just have this principle of playing survival with sur like survival limitations. I could just do quick dev commands and have creative inventory here real quick, but um, I don't think that's fair. I'm, I'm going to keep this a real survival world. We're going to be surviving for reals. All right, so that gives us a lot of material back, fortunately. All right, let's uh, do an update. Oh, our... Wait, we, we, we might be done. Wait, stop, stop, stop. No more, no more crafting this. How much metal do I have left? 100 and... Oh, okay, stop, stop, stop. I want to keep my metal. I want to keep my metal. No more of this. I think we have enough now. Yeah, we have a lot of extruded. I should have put a stop to that sooner. Okay, so we're probably going to have a lot of leftover extruded metal for other purposes if we need that, which is nice. All right, here we go. Here's the test with the hammer. Hammer goes up. Does it hit? It's, actually, it's like really hard. I think it just comes right up to it. It doesn't, doesn't make a noise at least that I can hear. It doesn't look like it smacks against it. It looks like it's just perfect. All right, so we finished that and we have a ton of just useless extruded, not, not useless, it'll be useful at some point later, I think, but just a ton of extra extruded metal that we don't need. So now let's put some extruded metal back and let's just fill up with as much brick as we can. And honestly, I just want to see if I can end up filling um, the top layer with brick. How much brick is that going to take out of us? So now what I'm going to try to do is just fill in this whole area with brick. This is how much brick I have on me right now here. I'm just going to get rid of all the stuff in my inventory so I can just focus on brick laying. This is the most exciting job, a brick layer right here. All right, so I've already used all of the brick that I just had in my inventory here. And as you can see, um, we're about halfway. That, that takes us about halfway with uh, with with this area up here. So you can really get a feel for just how resource consuming it is just to create walls. Walls and floors. Wow, I actually really have a lot of brick though. So that's kind of promising at least. All right, and it continues. So again, just a reminder, this is how much brick I currently, my entire inventory bar is full and I have all this extra brick in here. So let's see how far this gets us from, are we really halfway? This is looking good. This is looking good. Look at that. We had some brick. Whoa, another weird lighting effect. Yeah, we had some brick left over actually from that one. I thought we were actually going to run out of brick again and have to go for a third round. But all right, now this area is good. So I'm thinking, here's what I was thinking. Here's the middle. I was thinking, what if the middle has, like it, it stays on this level, right? And then over here, we have a tower. And then over here, we have like a square, square towers like this. We're going to be square like that just for the sake of ease of building and uh, time, how time consuming it would be much easier to build squares than circles in scrap mechanic. But then those towers can converge at the top to like a throne room or something. Does that sound cool to you guys? That sounds pretty cool to me. So what I'm going to do is have a 16 by 16 area walkway on the top. So I'm going to mark that off. So yeah, now I'm marking off where the 16 by 16 area walkway would be. All right, there we go. So that's where our towers are going to start on either side. That actually doesn't leave us as much room as I thought we were going to have. Like this really, really cuts down on the area, especially forward to back area. Like the depth of this area is not a whole lot. How many, how many lengths is this? That's one, that's two. It's pretty much two lengths. All right. Well, anyway, uh, this will essentially be where one wall is. So let's just go ahead and start with the wall. All right, guys, I'm looking, I'm looking for more of my brick. We're like, we're running out, people. We are actually, I mean, all right, we have more on this side, fortunately, but it is looking thin. Oh, no, I think I have all of my brick on me right now. 
Ah. Uh, I think it's officially... I think it's officially over. I think we've actually run out of brick completely now. Oh boy. Yeah, so this is all the brick I have left. Just what I have on me right now is all we're looking at. So let's see how far we can get with this. Probably not very far. I don't know how tall I want these towers to be. All right, I didn't even finish this wall yet. Here, let's start here. Build over. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get a look at what this is looking like from a little bit of a distance here. Hmm. Hmm. Should this be just one room? I kind of liked the archway idea. Whoa. Oh, never mind. I thought there were broken. I thought there was broken glass here, but that's just where I have it separated. So we're also going to be building this out from the front like that. Let me just go two lengths from either side. See how much of a gap there is. There's that much of a gap. So what if we just made these squares like this? And then this can be... How big is this area? All right, this is like one and two thirds. All right, let's just do this. We'll find the center point. Okay, center point looks like right there. All right, there's the center point. We mark the center point. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that should be 16. Perfect. So that's where we build the walls out to. And that's going to give us a 16 width pathway. Oh man, we're right at the edge now. Right at the edge of our materials. There's that. All right, we're going to have enough to at least finish these squares. And this at least gives us the base area of these. If we're going to have two separate rooms, this is what it's going to look like. All right, so now imagine if those are just two towers going up. Let's let's go look for more of a distance. Hmm. Hmm. That could look good. I think that could look good. What should they be? What should those rooms be? Remember, these rooms are also probably going to have to have... Should we have stairways on the inside or the outside? I feel like inside would make more sense. I also feel like there should be doorways lined up here, leading from room to room. So here, let's find the midpoint of these. There's one. There's two. All right, so that's the midpoint. All right, so how big did I make these doors? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine high. All right, so this is actually giving us some more back as well. Some more of our brick back, so that's good. And then I like to have the little section come out. All right, that looks good. And let's just have this line up over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, check that out. That looks good. We can definitely have those. I think we can have these on like all four sides pretty much. Just centered on all four sides should work pretty good. And that's going to give us some materials back to continue with whatever else we want to do. Okay, I think we have all the doors installed. I think this is looking pretty good. Oh, oh, I got more ideas. All right, what if I make this an archway now? So we go like one, two, three, four, five. I hope this is going to look nice. I hope this isn't gonna, I hope I'm not overkilling it. I'm going to kill myself with these visions in my head right now, <laughs> trying to make them a reality. And just like that. That looks like a pretty nice steepled arch. All right, there we go. We have the framework done. So now let's take a look again from a distance, see how this is coming along. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay, well, this kind of... Oh, that's looking... Oh, I like that. I'm liking how that's looking. What about you? Probably can't even see it from down below here, but oh, that's looking pretty good. This is going to be an elegant castle if if I can not mess this up. <laughs> I think this is actually going to look pretty elegant. So what I'm thinking now, as I'm, I don't have the materials to continue with this, but I'm going to let you guys know what the the plan could be here. Is I'm going to continue those two side towers straight up but then also fill in where that archway is going. So that's all going to be a solid wall and that's just going to use a ton of materials. So then those two towers end up going to meet. They're going to end up meeting each other above that archway. And then we can have another smaller tower, kind of like we have here. It it'll go in by another measure, whatever measurement of blocks is going to go in. So there's going to be another walkway around it. And we're going to have a single tower going up from there. And that tower itself, the base of that tower, might be a throne room. And maybe we'll have stairs on the outside or something. 
I don't know how big that's going to leave us with uh, room to build in there. But let's take a look at the space that we have in these towers right now. Here, we probably go on these outside walkways here. Okay, so now this room is this big. And you know what we could do for stairs? We could probably not take up that much room for stairs by having them in the corner instead of the center. So we can have the staircase start like right here. We'd have it go up to this corner and then continue going up and it should be above this doorway by now so it wouldn't interfere with anything. And then we can have smaller windows kind of like I put over there. So this is essentially where the towers are going to meet each other. All right, so then I'm thinking that this is going to be one solid floor. All right, so now we have a base for the second floor. So if we want a nice and centered tower, how many blocks in from the front and back? Because this is like... Oh, I don't even have enough anymore. I'm all out of brick. That's the end of my brick, guys. That is the end of my brick. So if we go in from right before that point, it goes that much. So look at that. All right, so I cannot keep the 16 width of the walkway, obviously, because that's going to give us a two by two tower. That'll be our, this will be our tower right here. If I do it that way, look at that tower. Put the throne room right inside. <laughs> Itty bitty tower. So obviously I'm going to need a much smaller walkway. So I'm curious, how big are those walkways? This isn't going to make sense. Because of the rectangle nature of these two floors below us. I mean, they're square individually, but combining them together, we're going to make ourselves a big, inconveniently shaped, irregularly shaped rectangle. I have some potential ideas, but maybe I'll go to you guys in the comments down below and uh, see if you have any other ideas on how we can design the second level of this. Before we get ahead of ourselves, uh, how about some feedback down below here? We have two rooms, two rooms that are next to each other. What should they be? All right. I think we made a lot of decent progress and opened up a lot of questions, a lot of unanswered questions about where this is going. Don't forget, if you're interested in Hank merch, um, let me know what kind of, what, what, like, what do you envision? For the, all of you that were saying we need Hank merch, what, what was in your mind of what Hank would be doing on a shirt or what the shirt might say about Hank or it doesn't say anything at all? Cause I'm just kind of curious in order for, in order for me to even pursue this, I need a, an idea. I need a design idea in mind in the first place. I'm going to hire an artist and everything. Um, and I'm going to have to get permission from Axolot if, if it does work out. But this is all just a reminder that it's all hypothetical. I might not be able to get the permission that I need, in which case it won't happen. I just want you guys to know that I've been listening and I want to make you guys happy because you guys make me happy. Because without you guys, this series wouldn't be possible. Without you guys, this hydraulic press wouldn't be testing out the most advanced piece of technologic equipment ever invented, which is the stabilizer mug. I mean, without you guys, we wouldn't have the furnace in here. Like, this is just, this all comes from you guys. Like, a lot of, a lot of my, a lot of my videos, they, they're inspired by your guys' comments. So, I want to thank you guys again. And, uh, don't forget, if you weren't already aware, we do have some, uh, diamond plate masks now on the merch store. And we got the merch that we've always had in the store, like push buttons, see what happens the classic channel logo stuff, and some other things you may not have been aware of if you've never visited the merch store. So I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, my not dying routine, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget, if you want to see more awesome stuff on the channel, you can check out some of the stuff on the end screen right here. Hope this video earned your subscription. This has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.